One of the major themes in photography is this desire to have a more permanent image. You have the Woodbury type, you have the platinum print, very stable, very long lasting processes. And then you also have the pigment family of processes, the gum bichromate process and the carbon print process. The gum print is based on the light sensitivity of chromium. Mungo Ponton is the first person to really do experiments with the light sensitivity of this compound. Talbot himself experiments with chromium salts. He discovers that if you mix them with colloids, gelatin or, or gum, they harden when they're exposed to sunlight. Based on the work of Talbot, it doesn't take too much time for people to figure out that if we take a colloid like uh, gum arabic and we put pigment into those and then we sensitize those with chromium salts, we now have a medium that can be brushed onto paper, exposed to light under a negative. When we put this piece of paper in warm water, areas that are struck by light will harden and that's where the dark pigment will be and areas that are not struck by light will dissolve away, leaving the white of the paper. And so now we have a brand new printing process based on chromium. If you look at a gum print, the darker the picture, the thicker the deposit of gum. And the whiter the picture, the more you're getting towards the actual paper. So the image itself will have slight relief. One of the names that's associated with gum printing and, and carbon printing is Alphonse Poitvin, a Frenchman who perfects certain elements of chromium printing. While it's imperfect, is the seed to an improvement that's later done by Joseph Swan that results in this, this process we now call carbon printing. It's essentially a, a piece of paper that's coated with gelatin that is bearing pigment. This thing is called the tissue. It's, it's not tissue-like at all. It feels like a piece of plastic. The tissue is sensitized with chromium, is contact printed with a negative. The light striking the gelatin hardens the gelatin selectively. That tissue now is put into cold water. A second piece of paper bearing clear gelatin on the surface is put in contact with the tissue they're slid into a tray with hot water. The unhardened gelatin with pigment ooze out the edges. Uh, it's softening because of the hot water. You peel off the original tissue and by washing it in, in hot water, you then take away all the black that you don't need in order to get a continuous tone photograph. The image itself is, is very, very permanent. It's still being done today. Uh, there are still people making carbon prints today. Pictorialists really established photography as a fine art form. So they used things like the gum bichromate process or platinum prints that involved a lot of hand work um, and craftsmanship. So you really had a sense of the photographic object as something that was made by somebody. Alfred Stieglitz is the person who is most associated with um, what was called the photo secession. He and Edward Steichen actually um, co-founded the movement and they promoted this idea through a publication called Camera Work. Um, Stieglitz had a gallery called 291 in New York that showed photography as an art form. This is a camera that was used by Alfred Stieglitz. It was given to the museum by George O'Keefe in the 1950s. The opening of that lens determines the sharpness of the picture. If you open it up quite a ways, you get an image that's kind of soft in the edges. And he was interested in what we call pictorialist photography, and this was a lens that was designed to do that. Stieglitz and Steichen and Kazebeer wanted people to take photography seriously as an art form not just an automatic activity that produced um, images without anybody's intervention. 
I think what the argument was really about was where is the creative input of the artist in photography? And that's a theme that goes back to the invention of the medium. <laughs>